Hi, this is Mike from FiberglassSite.com. And what we're going to talk about today is the difference between polyester and epoxy resin. I get so many emails and so many phone calls and people ask me, what's the difference between polyester and epoxy resin? Which is a good question, but I always come back with, it's not really important what the difference is. Uh, what's important is what is appropriate for your job. If you are laminating wood or making parts, standalone parts, you want to use polyester resin. If you are trying to bond one thing to another or make a repair, you want to use epoxy resin. So that's basically, in the, in the most simplistic terms, the difference between the two. Polyester resin, when, when you see a boat, whether it's 12 feet or 120 feet long, 99% of that boat is made of polyester resin because, you know, that's, it, that's just, that's how it's done. The epoxy resin is only used in the areas where, you, where a whole lot of strength is needed. Maybe, sometimes on the stringers, uh, on the engine mounts, and things like that. Why polyester resin is used to make boats instead of epoxy resin? The difference is polyester resin is stiffer. Uh, some people think that, that uh, boats are made of polyester resin because it's cheaper. Well, no, that's not, the, that's not the reason. Polyester resin is harder and stiffer. It still has some flexibility to it, but not as much as epoxy resin. If you were making skis or a skateboard deck where you need, need a, a lot of movement and a lot of uh, flexibility, you would use epoxy resin. Polyester resin, when you're making a car fender or making a mold for anything, for a car fender or for any mold, you need that mold to be stiff. So you're going to use polyester resin. So boats are made of polyester resin because of the stiffness of it. Cost-wise, usually polyester resin is about half to one-third the cost of epoxy resin. This is epoxy resin for marine laminating. It's very strong. It'll bond anything to anything. You know, and that's an exaggeration, but it's pretty close. This is a, a very high bonding epoxy resin. Um, once you use this to bond two things together, they're not going to come apart. Um, you can also use a resin thickener like Cabasil. Um, what Cabasil does is it thickens up the resin to hold it in place. Um, also, when you're using epoxy resin on vertical surfaces, you can use Cabasil. Cabasil is a white powder. If you're mixing one quart of resin, you use one quart of Cabasil. Cabasil is used to thicken the resin um, when you're bonding things together and when you're doing vertical surfaces. <clears throat> Alright, so when you're using polyester resin, unwaxed polyester resin like this, and you're doing one layer after another and it's tacky, the way that you're going to get rid of that tackiness is you're going to either paint or gel coat after your final coat. The paint or gel coat will starve the resin of air and cause it to cure to 100%. The other way to get it to cure to 100%, let's say you had to do some sanding uh, to get uh, sand out imperfections, you would do a layer of the polyester resin with the wax additive in it and the directions for how much wax to add are on the back of the can. Whenever you're handling the wax, the resin, or the hardener, always make sure that your hands, are, your, your skin is 100% covered. You should have gloves on, all your skin should be covered, eye protection, and of course breathing protection. Uh, that's very important. Never ever work with polyester resin without having your skin 100% covered, without having breathing protection and uh, eye protection. All right, this is marine grade epoxy resin. And the times that you're going to use epoxy resin is when you're bonding one thing to another. When you're putting new stringers into your boat, you have the old fiberglass hull in the boat, 
polyester resin will not stick to that old fiberglass hull. There are people who use polyester resin to put stringers in and two or three years later they're going to be doing it over again. If you do it with epoxy resin it's going to be permanent because epoxy resin is a bonding agent. You use epoxy resin when you're bonding one thing to another. An example of that would be putting stringers into a, a boat. Uh, if you have an existing fiberglass hull and you have to replace the stringers what you do is you sand down six to eight inches on either side of where that stringer is going to go. Then you take your, your new wooden stringer and you put it in place. You cut a piece of cloth long enough so that it will cover the wood and it will go six or eight inches on either side of the stringer. You mix up your epoxy resin, saturate the piece of wood with the epoxy resin, then you put your mat, usually by Axial Mat 1708, onto the wood. You let it go six or eight inches on either side of the hull, the part where you've sanded. Usually you're going to do at least two layers of the by Axial Mat 1708. You saturate the wood, you saturate both layers of the, um, of the mat, and when that cures, using this epoxy resin, it's going to be as hard as a rock and it's not going to come out. So. That's, in, that's one example of what you would do with epoxy resin. Uh, another example would be uh, putting on a new transom. And if you're putting on a new transom, you're going to sandwich the wood on. Uh, you would, you have your piece of wood, you saturate this with your epoxy resin, you put a piece of cloth or mat on top of that, saturate that with epoxy resin. Then you have your other piece of wood, you saturate one side of that with epoxy resin, put them together, clamp them, but not so tight that the resin is going to come out. And when that dries, the uh, sandwich is going to be very, very hard. You're not going to be able to separate it. But you want to have that piece of mat or cloth in between there to hold enough resin so that it won't come apart. And also you can thick up, thicken the resin with cabosil, as we talked about before. Okay, now we're going to talk about mixing, the differences in mixing polyester and epoxy. Polyester resin is mixed by adding a catalyst. Epoxy resin is mixed by mixing it at a ratio. Ours is mixed at a ratio out of three to one. A polyester resin is, mixed, is, is uh, mixed by putting in an amount of catalyst. An example would be, let's say today it's between 71 and 90 degrees. On back of the can there's a chart, and it, it's this chart right here. And what it tells you is, if you're gonna mix up a quart of resin, and the temperature is between 71 and 90 degrees, you would use 11 cc's of catalyst. So you get the cup, which we, we give you, you get the hardener, which we give you, and you put 11 cc's of hardener in here, you pour, take the 11 cc's, pour that into your one quart, uh, you mix it up with your drill mixer, and you use it. Um, depending on what kind of cure time, I always like to mix a quart first uh, to see what kind of cure time I'm getting. If, you, if you're getting enough working time, then you can mix up larger batches. You can mix up a half a gallon if you're getting up enough working time. If you're getting enough working time, you can mix up a whole gallon at a time if you're working out of a five gallon drum. But to mix, never ever use polyester resin without hardener. There is no circumstance that you will ever come across where you would use polyester resin without hardener. Now, let's talk about the wax, the surfacing wax. When, when we sell you the polyester resin, it comes unwaxed. The advantage of that is that you can do one layer on top of another when you, without sanding or prepping. When you use polyester resin and mix it with hardener, when it cures up, it's going to stay slightly tacky like scotch tape. 
So that, the advantage of that is you can do one layer on top of another on top of another and you can even paint it without doing any prep at all. If you come into a, a, a situation where you're going to need the sand to get some imperfections out or something like that before painting, what you do is you add the wax to the last coat of polyester resin and the directions on how to do that are on the back. You, just, you mix the wax in first, then the hardener, give it a good mix, put it on. That will cause it to dry to a sandable finish. But you only want to add wax if you need the sand. If you don't need the sand, don't add the wax because if you do, you would have to sand this wax out before you paint or before you do your next layer. 90% of the time, 99% of the time, you're not going to use the wax. So we're going to set that aside. Our epoxy resin is a three to one mix. And this chart, this three to one chart is on our website. So let's take an example. If we wanted to mix 32 ounces, which is a quart, we need 24 ounces of the resin and eight ounces of the hardener. So the best way to do that is to get these mix and measure containers from Home Depot or Lowe's. And what you would do is you would put in eight ounces of the hardener, because the hardener is lighter, so I like to put that in first. You put in eight ounces of the hardener, and we know that 24 and eight is 32. So if you, if you put in eight ounces of hardener, when you put in your resin, you just fill it up to the 32 mark, and you know that that's 24 ounces, because eight from 32 is 24. So you don't have to measure out 24 ounces in one cup and eight ounces in another cup. Just use math and use one of these mix and measure cups, and then you don't have any waste or anything like that. So to mix a quart, you put in eight ounces of the hardener, right up, you know, put it on a level surface so that you can see that you're putting in eight ounces of hardener, then fill it to the, then use the resin to fill it to the 32 ounce mark. And then this resin is a 100% solids resin. There's no dilutants in it like a lot of the other things you get. This is uh, 10 pounds per gallon. And since there's no dilutants in it, it's much, much better to mix it with one of these. Uh, you give it a good two minute mix, get down into the corners. If you try to mix this by hand, especially if you're doing very, very small amounts, you can mix it by hand. Maybe if you're doing four ounces or eight, six ounces, you can mix it by hand. But if you're doing anything bigger than half a quart, it's much better to use the drill mixer because you can't really get a good mix by hand when you're doing a quart. So let's do one more example. If we wanted to mix up two quarts, a half a gallon, we go to the chart and it says that we need 16 ounces of hardener and 48 ounces of resin. So very simply, we pour in the hardener up to the 16 ounce mark and then we pour in the resin up to the 64 ounce mark because we know that 64 minus 16 is 48. So if we fill this up to the 16 ounce mark with hardener and then up to the 64 ounce mark with resin and give it a good mix, we have two quarts ready to go. Now, very important about the epoxy resin, always start out mixing a small amount because you have about 45 minutes working time with epoxy resin, 45 minutes working time at room temperature. But if you were to mix up a quart of this and walk away for 10 minutes, it's going to do what's called flashover. And flashover is when heat builds up inside the middle of the resin and it, it, it'll, it flashes over, it boils over and it'll melt the container. The way you get 45 minutes working time out of, epoxy, out of any epoxy resin or to get your maximum working time out of any resin is once you mix up the resin, get it moving, keep stirring it, pour it down onto the surface, 
roll it, roll it onto the surface. As long as you keep it moving and working, you're not going to get flash over. So start out with the same thing that we talked about with the polyester resin. Always start out by mixing a small batch and then once you know your working time, then you can start mixing larger batches if you're getting enough working time. If you're, if you're, getting, if you're not getting enough working time, then mix smaller batches. All right, gel coat is mixed the same way that you mix polyester resin. It's mixed with a catalyst, and it's the same catalyst, MEKP, methyl ethyl ketone peroxide. And just like on the polyester resin, there's a chart on the back that tells you how many cc's per quart, per two quarts, a half a gallon, or a gallon. So as an example, if we were going to mix a quart and the temperature outside was between 60, uh, between 71 and 90 degrees, we would put 11 cc's of the MEKP. You look at the markings on here. Fill this up to 11 cc's. You put your 11 cc's into the quart, mix it up, and mixing up a quart will let you know what your working time is. One thing that's important when, about uh, the gel coat, gel coat, this has a lot of very heavy elements in it. Uh, polyester resin is nine pounds per gallon. This gel coat is 10 pounds per gallon so you want to give it a really good shake before you start pouring out your one quart or two quart so give it a shake like this for two or three minutes to get those heavy elements off of the bottom and do that for about three minutes and then that'll give you a good mix we get our best results with gel coat when we do it in two coats if you're doing a DAC or doing a recoating something that that already has a gel coat finish it's best to do it in two coats the first coat you only use your hardener and you roll on a thin coat or spray on a thin coat your second coat or your final coat if you're doing three coats your final coat you use the wax additive and what the wax additive does is when you mix the wax additive in with the gel coat, as the gel coat is curing, the wax additive rises to the surface. It creates a microscopic air barrier. And when you starve the gel coat of air, that causes it to cure to a 100% hard finish. But you only want that in the final coat. That's why we give you the gel coat unwaxed. This does not have wax in it. So you can do one layer, two layers, three layers without sanding or prep in between. And you only put the wax in the final coat. You put the wax in first, then the hardener, then mix it, then put it on. Um, one thing, very important thing, you never use gel coat without hardener. There's no circumstance when, when you're going to use gel coat without the hardener. Just never ever use gel coat without hardener. And of course, always have your skin 100% covered, have a breathing mask on, and eye protection when you're using gel coat and the hardener. On FiberglassSite.com, we sell the polyester resin and the gel coat in five gallon pails. Uh, this weighs 45 pounds, this weighs 50 pounds, and the difference is because the gel coat is thicker and heavier. So when you get your polyester resin, you just have to give it a little shake, turn it on its side, give it a little shake, because if it, if it settled while in, when it was being shipped to you, you just want to shake it up a little bit. With the gel coat, you have to take this lid off and use the drill mixer to mix it completely. Gel coat has a lot of very heavy elements in it. So what you do is you take a knife and make slits around the lid. You lift the lid off. You use your drill mixer to mix this completely so that you know from top to bottom it's 100 percent even then you can hammer your lid back on and there's a spout on here and you can use the spout to dispense it or you can just leave the lid off and dispense it that way but so with the five gallon drum of polyester resin just a little shake and then you can dispense it from the spout 
with the five gallon pail of gel coat, you have to remove the lid and give it a complete stir with an electric drill mixer. When you get the polyester resin from us, it's unwaxed. And one of the great advantages of that is that you don't have to sand in between coats. I'll give you an example. If you wanted to laminate this piece of wood, you would mix this resin with the hardener and you would saturate the piece of wood and then when it dries it's still going to feel slightly tacky then you put your piece of mat or cloth down on here and you mix up the resin in the hardener you pour it down onto the cloth the resin is going to soak through the cloth and meet up with the resin that has soaked into the wood and once they meet up and dry together wild horses can't separate them that's why you want to use professional grade unwaxed resin when you're laminating wood. When you're making a mold or when you're making parts from a mold, you want to use unwaxed polyester resin. The stuff that they sell at the home stores and at the automotive stores has wax in it. And if you were using that, you would have to sand it between every coat. This is professional grade unwaxed polyester resin. You can do layer on top of layer on top of layer without sanding or prepping because it doesn't have the wax inhibitor in it. And that's the, that's the great advantage of using professional grade unwaxed polyester resin. When you get gel coat from us at fiberglasssite.com, it is white and it's already tinted white, so it can't be tinted any other color except gray. You can use black pigment to tint it gray. You can use up to four ounces per gallon of black pigment to tint it gray. You cannot use more than four ounces. If you use more than four ounces, you're gonna weaken the resin. So for a light gray, you would use one ounce for a dark gray, you would use four ounces. Don't use more than four ounces. Give the, when you get the pigment, shake it up a little bit, pour it in, mix it, and you want it darker, you add more. If you want it lighter, add less. But don't use more than four ounces per gallon.